ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for staying late. I know it's uh, the last uh, lecture, but we keep the best at the last. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about electrical storm, which means recurrent ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation. So electrical storms is defined as three or more episodes of ventricular arrhythmias, whether ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation, sustained requiring uh, ICD therapies. And the episode should be separated by five minutes. Uh, the prognosis uh, seem to be very poor. Uh, if you look at the uh, mortality of all comers with cardiac, out of hospital cardiac arrest, the mortality is around 95%. So only 5% survive uh, from out of hospital cardiac arrest. Out of this 5%, uh, 50 to 60% will die in hospital. So most of the literature comes from ICD patients. So that's why I will discuss mainly ICD literature because the survival is negligible in patient without an ICD. So the AVID and the MADID trial uh, have shown that electrical storm or recurrent ventricular fibrillation is an independent risk factor for death. The relative risk is 2.4 in the AVID trial. The MADID 2 also found a 17.8 fold increase in risk of death in the first three months following electrical storm. Uh, the pathophysiology is not clear. Uh, it's not clear whether the electrical storm is a cause rather than a marker of sudden cardiac death. Uh, ventricular fibrillation usually results in increased intracellular calcium concentration, which may contribute to further deterioration of the left ventricular function. Repeated shocks by itself could induce some myocardial damage, as seen in animal models which can induce a more inflammation and fibrosis resulting in death. Myocardial injury or stunning from recurrent defibrillation may activate neurohormonal cascade leading to increased risk of death in the next, in the following three months. Exna reported in the literature uh, around 70% cardiac, uh, sorry, 70% mortality mainly from cardiac uh, reasons. Uh, which suggests that the maximal maximization of the medical therapy is warranted in the following the first episode of electrical storm. The prognosis of ICD patient in electrical storm was assessed in several trials, and all the trials actually shows increased mortality, except some small studies. Uh, however, these studies were relatively small in size with short follow-up, with different methodology and sometimes may show some conflicting results. However, we all agree that there is a three-month window for intervention where the risk is high. The risk of death after electrical storm is most pronounced in the initial three to six months, as seen in the studies. And as I mentioned before, most of the deaths were cardiac, around 70% uh, of the mortality is related to cardiac reasons, including sudden death. And um, I had the privilege of contributing in one small study at St. Michael Hospital, which I'm going to allude to later, which shows again the same thing. I'll show this later on. So the focus of my talk is to discuss the treatment. If you see a patient in the emergency room coming with electrical storm, how would you deal with this patient? I get so many times I get uh, calls from remote areas and sometimes big cities uh, from emerge emergency room uh, physicians and internists, cardiologists, they are afraid to deal with a storm patient. There's no need to be afraid because the patient already has an ICD, okay? I know it's a fri frightening situation where the patient jumps on bed screaming from pain. It's a very p painful uh, uh, ex um, experience to the patient, 
but no need to panic. If you, what you need to do is just to put the magnet on, on the ICDs. If you put a magnet on a pacemaker, the pacemaker will pace continuously. The pacemaker will become asynchronous. What, what happens if you put the magnet on an ICD? It will de prevent detection. So basically, you deactivate shocks. You deactivate ATPs. The device will not deliver therapies. But would it affect pacing? No. OK? So the first thing to do is just to put a magnet. And it should be a donut magnet, and it should be fixed securely over, exactly over the device. Not close to it, exactly over it. That will deactivate shocks, OK? And then treat the patient according to the ACLS, OK? Treat the patient according to the hemodynamic stability. If the patient is hemodynamically stable, just give him Uderone. We usually give 150 milligram over a few minutes, followed by another 150 milligram, followed by 900 milligram IV infusion. Okay, very simple, very easy. Uh, a, most of the patient comes um, in pain. They, they are scared, so you have to sedate the patient. So in addition to the magnet, you have to give the patient some sedatives. IV midazolam, one of midazolam, two of midazolam, three of midazolam as tolerated, fentanyl, 250, 25, 50, 100, 200, as much as it takes to sedate the patient. This is in addition to uh, 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 aggressive beta blockade as tolerated. So you give metoprolol, for example, esmolol. Metoprolol, I'm sure it's available in all hospitals. Usually five milligram over one, two minutes, followed by another five milligram in five minutes, maximum 15 milligram followed by an infusion. The role of antiarrhythmic therapy, uh, in, it's the antiarrhythmics usually indicated not to prolong life. It, antiarrhythmics indicated to decrease the recurrence, to decrease the number of shocks. And that was very well shown uh, in the literature. Many studies have shown that amiodarone is effective in preventing, uh, in decreasing the arrhythmic burden in the patient. This is uh, one of the studies, one of the major studies, the OPTIC trial, uh, which uh, show, showed that amiodarone in particular is very effective in, re in reducing the, uh, the arrhythmic burden in patients. There are some other um, uh, antiarrhythmic drugs, but most of the evidence comes from amiodarone. And I'm not sure if azimilide is available. I don't think it's av available. But uh, uh, other studies have shown that it also decreased the number of shocks. Revascularization is very important when the precipitating factor for the electrical storm is ischemia. So you have to refer the patient for cardiac catheterization, uh, angioplasty, or cabbage if ischemia plays uh, a role in electrical storm. Appropriate heart failure therapies, especially beta blockers, AC inhibitors, uh, should be prescribed, should be titrated, and should be reinforced. This is in addition to anti-thrombotic therapy, aspirin, Plavix, and lipid lowering therapy with a statin. You have to know if, uh, if the electrical storm is related to a reversible cause. For example, illicit drug abuse, uh, prolonged QT, or some any other electrolyte abnormalities, thyroid problems, you correct those underlying etiologies. Um, Sometimes you have a pause dependent tosad, and then the patient needs more pacing. Or if it's related to Brogada, for example, you can give quinidine, or you can, uh, you can give isopreterenol or uh, ablation to treat those things. In refractory cases, sometimes you need to sedate the patient, put the patient, uh, intubate the patient. Um, uh, balloon pump is needed if its ischemia uh, is, uh, plays a, a major factor. Uh, you can consider uh, surgical aneurysectomy if the patient has a big aneurysm. You can uh, consider epidural anesthesia, uh, cardiac sympathetic denervation, uh, um, or renal denervation as shown in one small study. Ablation. Um, I will briefly describe uh, the uh, ablation uh, for uh, patients with recurrent arrhythmias. 
most of the reports of cathode ablation electrical storm uh, were very small studies um, um, with conflicting results. But there is one big meta-analysis, big meaning 471 patients, uh, from out of 39 publication, have shown uh, a reasonable success from ablation, 70% uh, success, along with a reasonable less than 1% mortality. In one uh, single uh, center, a large uh, center, uh, single center retrospective study of 52 patients, um, 23 patients had catheter ablation, and this is associated with significant reduction of recurrent arrhythmias and, and arrhythmia burden. Uh, Sometimes ablation is performed uh, using the epicardial approach, especially if, uh, if, if it's non-ischemic, if cardiomyopathy is non-ischemic, and this is estimated to be around 6 to 10 percent of patients will require epicardial ablation. Primary ablation means you ablate before the occurrence of electrical storm, and there are many small, again, studies which shows that this uh, approach is effective. Of course, in ICD patient, it may decrease the uh, incidence of electrical storm. Uh, in general, the uh, ablation success, the acute success is around 70 to 90 percent. The mortality is less than 1 percent. And almost all the studies have shown a significant reduction in arrhythmia burden, but the recurrence rate ranges between 30 to 50 percent. In the guideline, ablation was in dose in 2006, 2009. Uh, basically, ablation is a first-line therapy if you have no structural heart disease and if you have sustained monomorphic ventricular tachycardia. Uh, if the patient has structural heart disease, then you could consider it as an adjunctive therapy in patients with ICD who had frequent episodes uh, and or if the patient fails to respond to antiarrhythmic therapy. Uh, however, the evidence is not uh, well established in patients without an ICD. Uh, consider radiofrequency ablation if the patient refuses an ICD or if the patient is not a candidate for ICD or if the antiarrhythmic was stopped or cannot be tolerated for any reason. Radiofrequency ablation uh, is efficacy is limited in patients who had uh, rapid VF and stable VT. This is the St. Michael study, as I showed you before, uh, that is, shows uh, how they treated patients with electrical storm in, in uh, in 653 patients, uh, 137 patients had electrical storm, which is relatively a large study if you look at the, the, the literature. And this is how uh, we treated patients uh, mostly with amiodarone uh, in the follow-up, uh, amiodarone with a beta block followed by am amiodarone with a beta blocker. You could also combine amiodarone with a sotolol. I know this is a, a contraindication in books, but uh, we are dealing with a a highly malignant uh, situation, sometimes off-label use of medication is efficacious. Uh, amiodarone defertilide, amiodarone procanamide, amiodarone uh, mixilatine. And with all these uh, combinations, uh, the, we had a relatively lower risk of recurrence, 22% uh, versus other studies. And the, the recurrence rate occurred later, nine months compared to, sorry, 16 months compared to nine months in the literature. So maybe aggressive antiarrhythmic therapy will modify the risk slightly. So the conclusion was that um, uh, aggressive medical therapy, antiarrhythmic therapy is maybe indicated and may actually delay the recurrence and decrease the incidence. Thank you. I would like to invite the speaker.